What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS3 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the PS3 Hen exploit on 4.89 or lower. You can check your firmware version by heading into the settings and going down to system settings and then scrolling down to the bottom to system information. You can see I'm on version 4.89. You can also follow this for future versions as well. If there's a 4.90 or 4.91 or 4.92 in the future, I will update the links in the description and I'll update the title to say that this video supports those higher firmware versions once a hybrid firmware and PS3 Hen support those newer versions. You can also check by going to ps3exploit.com and checking the PS3 Hen status as you can see, 4.89 is currently the highest firmware that is currently supported. So you can check that as well to see if any future updates are supported as well. And if they are, then you can follow this tutorial. Now, the PS3 Hen exploit offers similar functionality to the full custom firmware that you can install on PS3s. So it gives you access to things like the homebrew enabler and, you know, running emulators, backup games, all of that kind of stuff. But unlike the full custom firmware, it is a tethered exploit, which means that every time we restart the PS3, we have to run the exploit again, which only takes a few seconds once you have everything set up. So that's the main kind of downside compared to the full custom firmware. And you should make sure that your PS3 cannot install custom firmware before attempting to install HEN, because obviously if your PS3 is compatible with the full custom firmware, then you should be installing that instead because it's a better exploit. So currently custom firmware works on the fat model PS3s as well as like some of the slims, the older model slims, but not the newer model slims. And it does not currently work on the super slims. Whereas the PS3 Hen exploit that we're installing in this video will work on all PS3 models. So if your PS3 is not compatible with custom firmware, no worries, you can just go ahead and install PS3 Hen instead. So that's what we're going to be doing here in this video. So let's get into it. So firstly, what we're going to do is transfer over to the computer. Okay, so in order to do this, we do need a USB drive or external hard drive plugged into your computer. And what we need to do is put the hybrid firmware on there. Now you can get the hybrid firmware by going again to ps3exploit.com. And then we're going to go down to the hybrid firmware link down here, thanks to Little Bellop. So we're going to click that and that will take us to PSX Place to this post by Escorted3W. So what we're going to do then is go ahead and click the link, the top one here to download the zip file or any of the other mirrors that we have here. So I'm going to use the Mediafire link and download that to my computer. So the next thing we need to do is get the USB drive prepared, which we can do by getting Rufus, which you can download here on rufus.ie. Again, all download links will be linked in the video description below. So go ahead and download Rufus right here. You download the portable version and then you can just drag and drop it onto your desktop. So from here, we're going to run Rufus 3.18. If you're using an external hard drive, make sure you tick the box to list USB hard drives and then select your USB drive from the device list. And then from there, the boot selection, we're going to put non-bootable. And then we're going to make sure that the partition scheme is set to MBR and that the file system is set to large FAT32, and then you can call the USB drive whatever you want, and then click Start to reformat the drive. Now, again, as this warning states, make sure you back up any data on your USB drive before doing this, because this will wipe any data that's currently on it as we are reformatting the drive. So make sure you back up any data on the drive beforehand, and then go ahead and click OK and start formatting the drive. And there we go, it should only take a few seconds. So from here, we can open up our USB drive. As you can see right here, we can delete these two files that Rufus creates. And then what we're going to do is right click and create a new folder in the root of the USB drive, not inside any, you know, pre-existing folders or anything. So PS3 in uppercase characters. And then in that folder, we're going to create another folder called update, also in uppercase characters. And then in that folder, we're going to put our hybrid firmware. So we're going to open up the zip file for our hybrid firmware and then drag and drop this ps 3 updatepup into the update folder that you created on the USB drive and let that extract. So you should also go to view on your file explorer and make sure file name extensions is ticked and then just make sure that the file name is correct. It must be set to ps 3 updatepup just like this. 
If it's called anything else, then you'll have to rename it to ps3updat.pup. Okay, now another thing that you should do as a precaution is to check the MD5 hash of the file to make sure that the file has not been corrupted. So we just go on to onlinemd5.com right here, and this can allow us to compare the hash. So all we need to do is take the ps3updat.pup file and drag it into onlinemd5.com and it will calculate the hash. Okay, so you can see it calculated the hash. And once it's done that, we can head to the site where we got the hybrid firmware from and just copy the MD5 hash from here and paste it into the compare with section on onlinemd5.com. Make sure MD5 checksum is selected and then paste it in. And if you don't get the tick, just click compare and it should get a tick here to show that the hashes are the same. And you can look at them and you can see the hashes are the same, which means it has not been corrupted. So we are good to go. So once you've done that verification step, the next thing we need to do is eject the drive and plug it in to our PS3. Okay, so we're back on the PS3 now. So all we need to do is go to system update and update via storage media. And you can see we have 4.89.1 hybrid firmware, hybrid and exploitable. We're going to say yes to install and let this install. Okay, so we do need to install the update twice. And if you ran into any errors installing it the first time, then I will show you another way of in installing it now because we do need to install this twice. So if it worked fine from the home menu, you can just install the update a second time. Uh, from there, I'm going to install it again using the recovery mode just to show you guys another way of updating the system because it's a more reliable way of updating the system than doing it through the home menu. So you'll run into less errors if you do it this way. So if you are running into any errors, you can do it this way instead. But again, just make sure you install the update twice. So I've installed the update once already. So now I'm going to install it using the recovery options and therefore I'll have the update installed twice. So if you were running into any errors installing it through the home screen, here's another way of updating the system. So what you need to do is hold down the power button on your PS3 until it turns off. Keep it held down until it turns off and then hold down the power button to turn it back on, but keep your finger held down on that button until you hear it beep twice in rapid succession. So if that doesn't happen, if it just boots you back into the home menu, just repeat the process, turn it off again, and then again, turn it on while holding down the power button until it beeps twice like this. And then once you hear that, it will boot you into the recovery options or safe mode. Okay, so once you do that, you should get this message up here. What you need to do is plug in your PS3 controller with the charge cable into the PS3 and then hit the PS button. And then from there, we're going to go down to option six, which is system update. Select that option. And then you can see it says start and select buttons at the same time. So press start and select at the same time. And then it will check for the update. And as you can see, it's now preparing to update the system. Okay, so at this point, you can see we've got hybrid and exploitable firmware. Press the PS button, which we're going to do, and then it should start the system update from the USB drive. Okay, then you'll get this user agreement again, and we'll accept the user agreement, and then we'll just hit enter, and now it's installing the update from the USB drive. So yeah, this is the best way to install the update to avoid errors. So you can try the normal home menu method of updating the system. If it works, great, that's fine. If you are getting any errors doing it that way, come into re the recovery mode here and do it this way and then you're less likely to run into errors. So we're just going to let this install. Okay, so once you have successfully installed the update twice, you can then move on. So the next step is to activate your PS3 on PlayStation Network. Now you want to activate your account mainly for this auto licensing feature that's built into PS3 Hen uh, for your licenses. So we'll automatically renew the licenses. Uh, so it's recommended to do this. It's not 100% necessary though. If you don't use uh, PSN games, games downloaded from PSN, then you don't really have to do this, but it's up to you if you want to do it or not. It is a recommended step, but it is optional. So what we're going to do here is just show you how to do it anyway, basically. So all you need to do is create a new user account or select not your main account. I wouldn't say probably not a good idea to use your, to use your main account, but create another user account like this one here, user one. You can just create new user here. We'll create a user like user2, select that user, make sure we're logged in. So once you've logged into that account, we're then going to head over to our PlayStation Network and select the option to sign up or sign in. 
and if you selected sign up then just use an existing account which will allow you to log in now if you don't already have a playstation account a psn account just create one on playstation.net and once it's set up and you've got that account ready you can then sign into it on the ps3 so once you successfully log in to the ps network do not go to the playstation store uh, what you want to do is just head over to sign in and then we'll just go ahead and sign in or log in automatically and then from here you want to go to account management and sometimes this can take a little while to open and then scroll down to system activation ps3 system select that option you want to go to game and then activate system and there we go activation complete so now that that's done the automatic licensing feature inside ps3 hen will work for you so again that's an optional step you don't necessarily have to do that okay so now we just need to install ps3 hen we can do this by heading over to our network settings and going to internet search and we want to search for ps3exploit.com and just go ahead and hit enter and then that will take you to a google search and it should be the top link in the google search which is this one right here so select that option and we're now on to the ps3 exploit site so the next thing we want to do is bookmark this page by pressing triangle going down to bookmarks my bookmarks and add to bookmarks and that will add it in right there and then we're going to press triangle and head over to tools go down to home page and make sure we select use a blank page and then click ok and then from there we're going to exit out of the browser then we're going to go back into the internet browser again and that will take us to a blank page and then from there we're going to press triangle and head to tools and then we're going to delete everything we're going to delete our cookies we're then going to go back into tools we're going to delete our search history again we're going to go into tools we're going to delete the cache and then again tools delete the authentication information we're doing this to make the browser as lightweight as possible so we don't run into as many errors when trying to install hen and then i'd recommend once again exiting the browser and reopening it again back into that blank page and then from here we're going to go to triangle bookmarks and my bookmarks and load up the ps3 exploit site again then we're going to go up to ps3 hen and we're going to run the hen installer alternative this is the one I would recommend using. So hen installer alternative. We're going to select that option. And it's going to try and install here. And there we go. It's initializing. Sometimes this can take a while. Okay, here we go. So we get this message here. Now, if you ran into an error, that's completely normal. Even if it shut down your PS3 and you have to reboot. Completely normal. Don't worry about it. Just try it again. Uh, if you are running into issues, you can bookmark this page as well, by the way. So go to bookmarks, my bookmarks and add this to your bookmarks I know people love me saying bookmarks for some reason uh, with my Scottish accent but anyway so that way if you did run into an error while trying to do this then you can the next time you open the browser you can just go straight here from your bookmarks and try and do it again so as you can see it was successful for me so just keep trying until it is successful you get this message it says close the browser open remote play and quit immediately and then use new icon to download and install hen and then reboot after the installation. So that is all you have to do right there. So we'll follow the instructions. We close out of the browser and then we're going to go into remote play and open that. And then we're gonna press back to back out of it immediately. Okay, so my capture card had a bit of a heart attack there. So I don't know if, if you saw that, but essentially you go into remote play and then you just press circle uh, pretty much immediately. And then what you should see is you should have this install hen option. If you don't see this option, then try go into remote play again. Maybe give it a few seconds longer and then back out. And you should see this install hen. So all we need to do is run this install hen option. Hit install. Make sure you're connected to the internet. And we're going to go ahead and say yes to use this feature. Must first download software. So say yes. And that is it. We're now installing Hen, the homebrew enabler for PS3. So as you can see, install completed. So once it says that, we are going to reboot our system, turn off the system and turn it back on. And as you can see, as it's booting back up here, we have Hen popping up there in the right hand corner just for a second. So that shows that we have successfully installed Hen. Not sure why I'm, I'm selected on the wrong user account, but anyway, 
So as you can see, if we head back to game, we now have Enable Hen and Package Manager. So Enable Hen runs the exploit, which will allow you to run your homebrew applications and emulators, backup games, all that kind of stuff. And the Package Manager is what we use to install package files on to the PS3, like our again, our homebrew, our emulators and stuff like that. So we install them with the package manager and we run them with Hen. So what we need to do is enable Hen, first of all. So we're just going to select that option and wait for it to do its thing. So we can see Hen popping up here. And there we go. Welcome to Hen. Do you want to close the browser? Yes. Latest PS3 Hen available is 3.1.0. So there we go, we now have Hen up and running. Now, if you crashed or it failed during this process, just reboot the PS3 and try again. And of course, if it crashed, it would have probably shut down your PS3 anyway. So just restart it and try again. It's completely normal for it to fail sometimes. You just have to keep trying until it works. So once you have Hen enabled, a few more options will appear. For example, in the network settings, you now have things like the hybrid firmware tools where you can restart your PS3. You've got in-game settings, dump tools, service mode, maintenance, a three theme selector, and the PS3 Hen updater as well, which you can use to update Hen to the latest version, as long as you are connected to the internet, of course. Then you can go ahead and do that. You can also update your themes and stuff from here as well. So it's got a bunch of tools built in. PS3 Exploit Home as well will just direct you straight to the PS3 Exploit site automatically which is uh, also handy to just have there. So yeah, you have a few extra features there built in. But what we want to look at, of course, is the package manager, because this will allow us to install our homebrew, our emulators, and all of that kind of stuff. So in order to give you guys a good example of how Hen works, what we're going to do is switch on over to the computer and install a homebrew application. So if you just unplug that USB drive and plug it back into your computer, we can install a homebrew app. Now you can get homebrew apps from the website store.brewology.com and again link will be in the description if you just click on homebrew there are loads of different homebrew applications that you can install now most of these are designed for the full custom firmware but some of them will work under hen and some of them have specific versions for uh, ps3 hen so for example multiman right here on the left this is a very common a homebrew app that's one of the ones you should probably install first on your ps3 so if we select multi-man right here and scroll down you can see we've got multi-man base which is the version for custom firmware but then we also have this unofficial multi-man that is for hen as you can see here the version it says it's for hen so any homebrew app that you want to install check to see if it has a hen specific version first if it does, make sure you download that version. Even though it's for an older firmware, 4.84, it will most likely work fine on 4.89 as well, or whatever firmware you're on. So we're going to go ahead and download this version of Multiman. Of course, if the Homebrew app doesn't have a Hen-specific version, you can try it on PS3 Hen, but your results may vary. It might work, it might not. You should check in the description to see if it says anywhere about supporting Hen or not because some homebrew apps do not support Hen at all and could actually cause problems when trying to run uh, through Hen. So for example, things like uh, CC API, as explained here on ps3exploit.com, it says do not enable you know, factory service mode with PS3 Hen, so make sure you don't enable factory service mode. And it also says do not install CC API with PS3 Hen as well, because those can cause major problems. So CC API, console control API, you do not want to install that on PS3 Hen, but most other homebrew you can try on PS3 Hen and it should, you know, it may work with some issues, but if there's a Hen specific version, then it should be fine. So, so we've got the unofficial multi-man that's designed for use with PS3 Hen. So all we need to do is pop that on the USB drive. So we can just put it on the USB drive. You don't need to put it inside any folders or anything. You just pop it in the root of the USB. And then, of course, we can eject that USB drive and plug it into the PS3 again. So back on the PS3 with the USB drive plugged in, we're going to head to Package Manager, Install Package Files, and we're going to select Standard, which installs them from the USB drive. And as you can see, the Multiman package file shows up here. So we'll select it and that will install Multiman onto our PS3. 
Now, if you get an error when trying to install this, it's probably because you don't have Hen running. Remember, you have to run Hen every single time you reboot the PS3. Otherwise, your homebrew apps will not install or run. So since we're running Hen, we should have no issues now running Multiman. So we'll run it. Okay, so when we launch this here, you can see we've got uh, to sign our soul to the devil as usual. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And it will install the Multiman data to internal hard drive. And as you can see, there we go. Multiman is loading up a homebrew application running through PS3 Hen without custom firmware. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we've got FTP, for example, you can enable. There's a bunch of different settings. I personally turn off um, the sparks because uh, it kind of slows things down a little bit, as well as the theme music, wherever the hell that is, because that does not totally get annoying after a while. Uh, there it is, theme audio. Let's turn that off. So yeah, and also, what's that? TV overscan zone. Yeah, and also inactivity timeout. I also turn that off as well. Just personal preferences. But from here, you've got access to like a file manager. Um, and you can also like launch your games from within here as well. Retro games and PS3 games. So yeah, if you don't know how to set up Multiman, I do have a tutorial on that already. So for example, if we go ahead and restart the system here. So if I restart the system to restart the whole PS3, Okay, so we're back after restarting the PS3. Now, what you'll notice is that if we head into network settings, we no longer have the hybrid firmware options. Uh, we also will not be able to run things like Multiman. So when we try and run it here, you can see we get this error code. So that is essentially what's going to happen if you are not running Hen. And that's what happens when you restart the PS3. So all you need to do is enable Hen again every time you restart the PS3 and just wait a few seconds for it to enable. Obviously, it can crash sometimes, as I said before, in which case you just have to, uh, you know, reboot and try again. But as you can see, it only takes a few seconds there, and we're back up and running. So we can, again, if we go over here, we can see we now have our hybrid firmware tools is back, and also, of course, our multi-man as well. We can run this now once again. So anyway, that is essentially it, guys. That is how you set up the PS3 Hen exploit on your PS3, which works on any PS3 model, unlike custom firmware. Uh, if you are interested in any other future videos, I, I have done tutorials that are mainly targeted at custom firmware, but some of them will work on the PS3 Hen as well, other homebrew applications and stuff. So again, just check store.brewology.com, see if there's a Hen version of the app available, or just double check to make sure the app actually works on Hen if you're going to follow any of those videos, but I'll put the links down in the description. Obviously, do not follow the one that covers uh, using CC API because you do not want to run CC API um, or uh, factory service mode on the PS3 when you're running Hen. Just be aware of that. That's very important. You don't do that. But uh, yeah, that's essentially it. So hope you guys enjoyed it or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.